We are looking at an up and down pattern in our temperatures over the next week. Ice impacts Nebraska and Iowa, and the atmospheric rivers return to the west coast. All this and more next at the Weather Farm. Welcome to the Weather Farm. This is your weather forecast for Friday, December 13th. We have an area of high pressure over the northern Great Lakes region as that storm system that impacted the northeast on our Wednesday and Thursday finally moves out to sea. Behind it, we see warmer temperatures moving to the north and east. That weather will continue to move east as we go through the weekend. If we look out west, we do see another atmospheric river beginning to make its way towards the coast of California and Oregon. That will bring ample rain and snowfall for those higher elevations. As we look at our Saturday, we see an area of low pressure that has moved out of the Rockies into Kansas. Ahead of it, it is drawing moisture up from the south. It's going to bring heavy rain to parts of Missouri and Arkansas. On the northern side, across parts of Iowa, we could see a brief period of some icing and freezing rain. And to our north, we ex expect to see snowfall. All of this, even the ice, will turn over to rain as we get through our Saturday, and it will move east into Indiana and Illinois. Out west, we continue to see that system make its way on shore. We will see four to six inches of rain for the coastal areas and two to three feet of snow for those mountainous regions. As we look to our east, we do see some scattered showers off the eastern coast of Florida. Nothing that's going to impact your Saturday plans, but just keep an umbrella handy for that area. So let's look at this. This is Saturday morning. We see that pink. That's that area of icing across northern Iowa. But by Saturday afternoon, it changes to rain. And then on the back side, it changes to a little bit of snow before all of that moves east into Illinois and Indiana. As we saw at the end of that frame, we did see the possibility as we get into our Saturday night of some freezing rain across parts of far northern Michigan. That's something we'll continue to want to watch. So what is, what's going on in the atmosphere that's going to bring the threat of icing and uh, freezing rain to northern Iowa? So we're going to take a look at this particular frame. And one of the things that we use here at the Weather Farm to analyze what type of precipitation will fall as systems move, especially in the winter, where we're close to that 32 degree line, it is what we call a skew-t diagram. So the skew-t diagram takes, is, tries to take the temperature at all levels of the atmosphere, from the surface all the way up to the jet stream and even higher in the atmosphere. So it takes all the data points and tries to forecast what's the temperature going to be at each of those levels. And so these horizontal bars, those are the different levels. So here's the 500 millibar line. That's where the map we typically look at to see those ridges and troughs. Uh, the 300 millibar is typically where the jet stream resides. Um, 850 millibars, that's about 3,000 feet above the surface. That's where we start to see about the type of air that can mix down to the surface and impact the temperatures we see here. And for the eastern half of the United States, most of the eastern half resides at about 1,000 millibars or somewhere in that neighborhood. The two temperatures we see here, and this is, again, as of Saturday at 12Z. This is Saturday at 12Z, so about 7 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Iowa time. We see a dew point of 29, and we see a, a surface temperature of 31. What these diagonal lines going from southwest to northeast are, these are the temperature lines for the different layers of the atmosphere. So as you go higher in the atmosphere, the temperature should decrease. So if you're at minus 10 degrees Celsius at the surface, as you go up, you're going to decrease in temperature to whereas by the 500 millibar line, you would be at minus 30. So you take these lines, you go down to the temperature that it tells you to, and that's how you know what the temperatures are in the different layers. So what we see here, why we think we're going to have rain is, one, we see a deeply saturated a column of air. So it, the, the red and green lines are very close, if not on top of each other, from the surface all the way up to the jet stream level. This tells us that the entire column of air is deeply saturated, so there's going to be precipitation falling. In those upper levels, where it's below zero Celsius, it's going to fall at snow. 
But what we see is right down here as we get to about 750 or 800 millibars, that temperature, if we take that down, it gets to be right at zero Celsius. And then it gets above it. So that snow is then going to melt to rain, and it's going to stay warmer than zero Celsius until about 950 millibars. So it gets right above the surface. And then at the surface, we see temperatures that are sub-freezing. So it's not going to have time to refreeze and fall as snow. What's going to happen is it's going to fall as rain and then freeze on the surface. So this is just an idea of, of the type of tools that we have to analyze what we see. Now, as, the as we were to take this on later in the day, we would see that this surface temperature of 31, it's going to warm above freezing. So this line may come sh more straight down, and that would tell us that it's going to stay all rain. It'll fall as snow in the upper levels, but as it gets to that point where it gets above zero Celsius, it will turn to rain and then fall as rain at the surface. So this is just another tool that we have at our disposal to help pinpoint our forecast. So let's look at that 500 millibar level as we look at what our weather is going to be like for this coming week. As I mentioned in the opening, we have a lot of ups and downs going on. We're going to have a, lot, a series of ridges and troughs across the United States. So on our Friday, we see that ridging building bringing warmer air into the Great Lakes area in the Ohio Valley. Here's that area of low pressure that's ejecting out of Colorado. It's going to make its way east on our Saturday. Across parts of Quebec and Ontario, extreme ridging's in place, but we see that atmospheric storm make its way on shore. It's going to kind of eject up through the northern plains into Canada, and there's going to be a slight trough. But as you see, we have a ridge in the east, trough in the central, another ridge building, and then another trough behind it. So it is that up and down pattern that we're going to see throughout this week. But it is the second trough that makes its way on shore by Monday or Tuesday that's going to give us at least a change in our weather as we get to the end of next week. It's going to dig across the central plains on our Wednesday. And what this is going to do is it continues to dig. It's going to start pulling down a branch of that colder air that's going to dislodge from north of the Arctic Circle and bring another shot of Arctic air to the eastern half of the United States by the time we get to our Thursday and Friday of next week. Where we've seen temperatures 5 to 10 degrees below normal on our Friday, those are going to move east. As I mentioned, we had warmth across Missouri and Kansas. That's going to con that warmth is going to continue to move east over the weekend, bringing temperatures above seasonal norms by the time we get to our Sunday into our Monday. In fact, across parts of um, Manitoba and Ontario, we can see temperatures 30 to 35 degrees above normal, as well as here through Missouri and Illinois. We could see mid-60s for this area. But we start to see the hints then of that next trough that's building. So we see the cooler temperatures first start to infiltrate the western part, and then we see the really cold air making its way out of British Columbia into Alberta. And as it moves into Saskatchewan, we're going to see temperatures 30, 40, 45 degrees below seasonal norm. It's going to make its way into to the Dakotas, and it's going to spread east by the time we get to our Thursday and Friday. So as we look at those cold air masses as they make their way into the United States, the one that just left and is moving east over this coming weekend and the one we're looking at for next week, what is keeping the cold air from staying consistent or what's allowing us to keep going up and down in temperatures? The the thing we're going to look at is this snowpack. We've talked about this before. But where we see the blues, those are snow depths of 4 to 8 inches on the ground. Those deeper purples, that's areas where there's at least a foot of snow on the ground. And the more snow you have on the ground, because snow has a higher albedo, it, when sunlight hits it, it reflects it off. So it doesn't absorb into the ground. It doesn't allow the air near the ground to warm up. And that's why we're going to we, cold air masses can maintain their, their temperature as they move across deep areas of deep snowpack. But what we see across parts of Alberta is we see gaps in this. We don't see a consistent 4 to 8 inches or 8 inches plus, which would be ideal for snowpack. We see a lot of gaps in this area. And as we get into the lower 48, even across parts of Montana, into the Dakotas in northern Minnesota, we do not have a constant area of 4 to 8 inches snow depth 
So even as that cold air makes its way into the Canadian provinces, and we see we saw temperatures earlier this week 20 to 30 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, as they make their way into the Dakotas, that air does moderate, and especially as it makes its way down into Iowa, Illinois, and into the Ohio Valley. So it's one of those things that, again, we've been watching and seeing how the, the snowpack develops across Canada and how that plays an impact in our weather. If we could get a more sustained cold snowpack here, build a snowpack into the Dakotas, into the Northern Plains, we would have a better chance of more prolonged cold air across the lower 48th than these two or three day patterns that we seem to be in over the last couple of weeks. So on our Friday, as we mentioned, high pressure that over the Northern Great Lakes will make its way into the Northeast on our Friday. We watch for that low to eject out bringing rain to Missouri and Arkansas, ice initially across parts of northern Iowa. Out west, we do see the atmospheric river bringing heavy rains along the coast and heavy mountain snows. That ejects up into Canada and brings some significant snowfall to Manitoba and Ontario as we get into our Monday. We have more moisture coming up from the Gulf that's going to tie into a developing low pressure system, bringing heavy rain to the Ohio Valley and Tennessee Valleys. And then we look out west. By the time we get to our Tuesday, another low pressure is making its way. It's going to pull up moisture, bringing out ahead of that next trough heavy rain across the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. But it's this trough that's going to dig all the way deep that's going to allow another intrusion of Arctic air. And as we look, that system makes its way, we could see another round of heavy rain for the Northeast and heavy snowfall. In terms of rainfall, the heaviest amounts will fall in these darker purples where we could see in excess of two inches of rain. In the lighter purples, we'll see about one inch of rain falling over the next several seven days. Again, this is going to be impacting the Ohio Valley into the Tennessee Valley, even into parts of northeastern Texas you could catch in on that heavy rain. Out west, we're going to see rainfall four to eight inches along the coast, and snowfall is going to be measured in feet. As well as up in Canada, just east of Hudson Bay, we're going to see more heavy snow falling over the next seven days in that area. And in terms of snowfall, it's going to be in those mountainous areas as that system does make its way into Saskatchewan and Manitoba for our Monday, we're going to see a wide swath here of 6 to 12 inches uh, of snow, 15 to 30 centimeters of snow, across most of this area as it makes its way toward Hudson Bay. And as we get, get that lake effect on the eastern side of Hudson Bay, we're going to be measuring snow here in feet. Two to three feet of snow is likely. We hope you've enjoyed this weather forecast. Check back with us on our Monday as we start to look towards Christmas Day. By then, we should get some of the longer range models, the GFS and the Euro, coming to give us a picture of where we might see a white Christmas, where we might see cold temperatures for our Christmas day. We hope you have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you soon.